Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Ninja Boy. I'm doing all this in post commentary because my microphone decided to not be where I wanted it, and I didn't notice until after I did the vocals. So, last episode, we fought our evil ninja robot clones in the sewers, and now we gotta go in the sewers to find out who's creating all the evil robot ninja clones of Jack and Ryu. We're going to be facing quite a few new enemies here. First of all, we want to go into the water here. And we want to travel south. This enemy. I'll find him eventually, but not in the water, because he's harder to fight in the water. He's the usual flying enemy that we faced. I just don't want to face him in the water because he's much harder when we face him in the water. Now here, if we go west, we are going to reach a dead end. So you want to go to the east instead, and you want to follow the path. Go down these stairs. Now, there is a fork that we can take. We can go north and then go into the water, but we're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're going to go to the stairs to the west. Before we can do that, though, we get an enemy that I never met in the practice run, which are these snake boxers. I actually decided to go ahead and fight them. I was kind of surprised that I ran into them because I never saw them at all the, when I tried this area out. And as you can see, they're much like the Minotaur enemies. However, they are much easier to get in the Sword Sun combo that you can do late game. You only need to defeat two of them. And it's kind of hard to tell whether they're going to hit, throw a fireball at you or not. If they don't f throw a fireball, be ready to get out of their way because that's when you know they're going to fly at you and do like quite a bit of damage if they connect. And they give a good amount of experience too. 2,000 experience points and 1,600 sen. So now we need to go to the stairs to the west, and we're going to do that after we face another enemy. It's these eyes again. I'll gladly take them on. I will very gladly take them on. And I got a skull. Getting the skull is not cool. But as you can see, these guys are painfully easy to fight with the Thunder Sword. So easy, in fact, that you can just tear through them in about a minute. If things go your way. And yeah, we want to go to the north, get in the water, and then go to the east to find some treasure. But in order to do that, we're going to have to face these guys first. And yeah, since I had never faced these guys in the practice run, I don't have the best of experience with these guys, and I basically get walloped for a few hits. And I thought that guy was going to throw the fireball at me, but thankfully he did not. Still want to get some M icons, though, for when I need them. And because I'm doing this post commentary, I'm going to mention like things about the original live commentary that I did. Because things happen in live commentary, I suppose. And yes, this is where you want to go. It's a dead end, but it's a dead end that leaves a treasure. Also, I did have trouble getting on those stairs. They're rather picky. And I had to look up what the star bomb does. It's a T-Star that sticks to enemies when they hit them, and then explode. The Magic Mine is much better. Because the Magic Mine not only get ri gets rid of all the enemies, and I didn't want to do that, the Magic Mine gets rid of all enemies during a side-scrolling battle, but it also does really good damage against bosses. And 
once again, I had trouble with the stairs, and I met a new enemy that I had yet to meet in the sewers. These two-can baseball players. These guys fight like the Ryu clones, in that they can stretch your neck and force you to hit them with nothing but the Miracle Kick in order to get rid of them. They are usually paired with the football players, who I can usually beat up. And I believe in order to get out of this battle, you had to beat six enemies. But it felt like I was hitting seven or eight because of how I was just doing everything. Just absolutely just tearing through these guys. And they don't give the best amount of experience, but it's still a welcome amount of experience nevertheless. So now we need to go ahead and face another set of enemies, because why not? Got ourselves a nice little explosion. I'll gladly take that. Thankfully, the two cans have not done the neck crane on me yet. And you just had to do it. There we go. Yeah, that football guy just had to stand right out of range there. So now that we've taken this path, we want to go to the west and then take these stairs to get over to these stairs leading downwards. And from here, we just need to go to the ground on the other side. We're pretty much close to the end of this area. And here is where the Toucans decided to not only get some fast punches in, because they will punch you if you do not get to them, but, yeah, the net crane thing. You're a Toucan, not a giraffe. Thankfully, I had plenty of these guys surrounding me. So I just tore through them all with the Miracle Kick and got out of this battle. And because I hadn't found all of the enemies that I wanted to face, I go ahead and walk back and forth, trying not to run into the steps leading upwards because that leads to the boss. The Jack and Ryu clones return as normal enemies in the sewers from this point forward. Yeah, just from the two battles I was required to face, well, one of them at least, just from the two required battles alone just to get into the sewers, one of them if you go get the Sunderstored right after you get the Fire Punch, which you can do. Those guys are not worth the trouble because the experience just isn't worth it. And apparently walking around in a square didn't exactly work, so I go back to just going left and right. And moving my thumb between left and right more slowly. And I get this enemy that did not show up in my practice run. The Hedgehog Cheerleaders. They are basically a teleporting enemy that shoots fireballs in eight directions. We've seen this kind of enemy before. I didn't want to face them because, again, fast teleporting fireball enemy. I end up in the battle anyway despite running, and I decided, hey, what the heck. Let's go ahead and do this. And they are fairly quick, and they are fairly powerful for this point in the game. I mean, you can avoid the fireballs, and you can take care of the toucan baseball players just like that. You can take care of the sluggers just fine. But if you fight just the baseball players, you're not going to get a whole lot of experience. Even the football players give more experience than the sluggers, it seems. Not much of a home run for farming there, apparently. Thankfully, we only had to defeat like maybe three or four, and yeah, I just stood here 
embarrassed by the very low amount of experience I got from this. Still leveled up, though, because of all those snake boxer battles. I'll take those. And from here, remember the boat guys that we saw at the very beginning of the sewers? I moved back and forth to try to face them again. Unfortunately, I get everyone but the boat guys for a while. So, it's April 8th, 2019 when I'm recording this video. And a couple of parts ago, I mentioned that Triple H versus Stone Cold Steve Austin house show footage from Germany. Yeah, y'all remember that. I'm going off topic again. Oh, boy. Well, the reason I'm bringing it up again is because two days before I recorded this, the WWE Hall of Fame happened. The Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the class of 2019 because the day after that, which was April 7th, I watched all five hours of WrestleMania, including the kickoff, the whole two hours of that. Well, I didn't watch the Hall of Fame. I watched G1 Supercard. So I missed out on basically something that's related to what I wanted to talk about. Now, no, it's not Enzo and Big Cass jumping the car, to, jumping the uh, bar barricaded supercar. Once again, I can't English to save my life. No. Bret Hart was up at the, at the podium, and I didn't see, and I didn't see it. The podium was in the ring instead of on the stage like it was in the last couple of years. They kind of changed it up. So Brett's there because he's t he's uh, accepting the induction on behalf of the Hart Foundation, which was him and Jim Neidhart. Sadly, Davey Boy Smith, Owen Hart, and Brian Pillman were not there. Natalia was the one introducing him. Natalia being Jim Neidhart's daughter. And she's on the stage with, with Brett. Brett's doing his speech. All of a sudden, this guy in this little multicolored Rasta hat just jumps the barricade, charges into the ring, and then tries to attack Brett. This is two weeks after I mentioned the Triple H, Stone Cold Steve Austin house show footage of some guy trying to beat up Austin. And we finally got these guys. These guys are pretty easy to fight. As long as you stay close but not too close, you can hit them with the sword, and if you need to, you can hit them with the miracle kick as well. Be sure to do the non jumper salt kick just to avoid, you know, being hit by contact damage. So anyway, this guy runs to the ring, tackles Brett, and a whole bunch of guys, security, wrestlers, they went after this guy. Once again, why would you do this? Nothing good will come out of this. And, yeah, he got caught and escorted out quickly and dashed Wilder with a revival. He was one of the guys escorting the dude out. He had him by... had his right hand over him. No, his left hand. And he just took his right hand and just... BOW! Just... clocked him in the face. I wish he hit him harder. The clones are down, but you still have to deal with me. They made a fuss to get us seven aura balls, so you're not to be trusted. In the bottom of ninth with two outs that I'm in. Perfect game. No, you will lose. A big home run will end this game. And it's time to face Bad News Boss. And I know it's a reference to Bad News Bears, but let's face it. The whole Bad News thing reminds me of Bad News Bran, or better yet, Bad News Barrett. I'm pretty sure most of the people who be watching this will probably not be more reminded of Bad News Barrett than Bad News Bears. Also, I forgot Bad News Boss's name right after I mentioned it. Because that is a thing that I do in live commentary. So, for Bad News Boss, you want to hit him with Magic Mind as much as possible. You need to use the, mag the meat bun to refill your NP, go to it. Just go ahead and do it. Headcracker is an attack that I never saw in the practice run. It is an explosive attack that damaged both Jack and Ryu and does over 30 points of damage. 
There are other attacks that he does. There's one in the... Wow, 50 points. There's one that he does that... But not in the video, amazingly. Where if it connects, you get petrified and you need to be healed with a cupsel. I had it ha happen in the practice run, but not here. Don't know why. I was expecting him to hammer me with that attack. Spirit Blast hits both uh, both Jack and Ryu, but it doesn't even do ha half as much as Headcracker. Headcracker and Petrification Attack are the two things that you definitely want to avoid. Bad News Boss was definitely doing it. And um, Firecracker, I think that's the one that petrifies now that I think about it. But anyway, you do want to hit Bad News Bots with Magic Mine. Sometimes it may have no effect. Keep doing it. Here I pretty much am out of NP. I go ahead and hit him with the Thunder Sword, but I know I'm going to have to use the Meat Bun eventually. So I go ahead and do that. And Fire Punch is okay. Yeah, you can use either Fire Punch or Thunder Sword. It doesn't really matter here. So yeah, Headcracker hurts, Spirit Blast not nearly as much, and Firecracker can, or Fire Header, I forgot what the name of it is, but the baseball throw, that can para, that can petrify you, but thankfully, it never did it to me in this battle, apparently. And I went ahead and used the Meat Bun because I wanted to get both of my guys healed, and I wanted to use Magic Mine again. Is. Again, it's going to do a ton of damage to these bosses from this point on in the game. And there's Rocket Punch. That does about as much damage as, hair, as Headcracker, too. I forgot about Rocket Punch. But we do eventually beat this guy. After I consider what to do, and I decide, you know what, I might as well go ahead and use Magic Mind. I was also kind of frustrated with the fact that I just could not hit the guy, because for some reason, Bad News Boss was evading attacks like a boss. Pun somewhat intended. And it's Ryu's Thunder Sword that gets the final blow in, not the Magic Mind. But at least, hey, at least the uh, Magic Mind did it. And we defeated Bad News Boss. 3,500 experience. 4,500 Sen, that's definitely good enough for a that. And the Gold Aura Ball. This is the Gold Aura Ball. We now have all seven of them. We have to explain who really stole Ori. Or rather, who's really stole the Aura Ball to Ori. Who, the real name is actually Oli for some reason, but they spell it Ori here. And from here, I go back to the previous room because that'll make it easier for me to use... Magidor, that's it. Had to think about it there for a second. Even in live, even in post commentary, much less live one, I still, yeah, it, it, it's basically become a trademark at this point. So now that we're back in the flip town, I do three things. One of them is the inn. The other one is talking to Oli, and the third one is talking to all the people. Because some of them will say different things. I'm sorry I acted rudely. I heard the ball is very... Darn it, life commentary. Important to you. Please keep that gold aura ball in my apology. Grandpa's is chaotic, but the linear car is running. Be careful. So we can now go take the southern subway opening and go to Grandpa's. Oh, and I look for items as well. I actually look for the item shop, rather, and buy items. And Yeah, I'm almost at 90,000 sen. So I get my sweet buns. I get my meat buns. I see if I need to get any boo bombs, dragon ads, or capsules. I pretty much get everything that I need from this point on. So now that we've taken care of everything... 
in the item shop, it's now time to wait for where my live commentary would have been. And then I go talk to the people of good old Athletown because some of them do say different things when you beat Bad News Boss. And I'm waiting for him to do this at any time now. That's right, I was talking about the petrification thing. That's why I was waiting for so long. And these two people say the same, and I'm pretty sure everyone, almost everyone to the left of them says other stuff. The operation of the linear card at Grand Palace is resumed, but nobody comes to this town. Gather around! The boys who saved our city are here! Our heroes! Gather around! You were hating me 20 minutes ago. Sorry about that a little while ago. Did I hurt you? What? Did you say not at all? Not all that good, I guess. Then why did you do it? You say the same thing. Are you the two mean guys? You aren't? Really? Then you aren't going to hurt me. Are you? He still don't get it. Alright, we're going to have the athletic meet. The first prize is mine. And I think it's either this kid or the other one that was vengeance. I'm sorry about that. When I become an adult, I'll be a strong man like you. Yeah, I'm going further ahead of the commentary. Also, glad to see you're not vengeant enough to the point where you want to beat me up years later. And you just welcome me to the town like always. So, we have taken care of business in Athletown. And the southern subway area is up and open and will be able to take us to Grand Polis. But that will have to wait until the next video. Join me next time where we go to Grand Polis and see where our adventures take us from here. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!